In this session, we're going to talk about a classifier that actually comes out of the field of statistics and is a fairly old model. It's called logistic regression. And you can actually tell by its name that it's coming from the field of statistics, where usually terms have much more awkward names and more scary names. Think about the other classifiers that we looked at earlier on. They had cool names, such as naive Bayes and k-nearest neighbors. Those are coming from machine learning and from artificial intelligence. So by the name of the technique, you'll now be able to classify whether it is a statistically based method or an artificial intelligence based method. So let's look at logistic regression, which is in fact very similar to linear regression in many ways um, for predictive purposes. So the first question is, well, why just not stick with linear regression? We already know how to do that. And I hope that I'll convince you that it is useful to move to logistic regression. And if I do, then hopefully you'll keep watching the video and then I'll show you how to use it. Now, in logistic regression, the relationship between the inputs and the output is specified, like in a linear regression, we write out an equation, but it's going to be slightly more complicated. In this session, we're going to focus on using logistic regression for prediction, for classification. And in the next session, we'll also talk about logistic regression as an explanatory tool. Remember that in statistics, usually the focus is descriptive explanatory. And that's why this method is actually pretty useful for both prediction and explanation. But it will be used in a very different way. We're going to use the same beer preference example where we had the online bartender, if you remember. And the idea, again, is to try and use demographics on customers in order to classify their preference of either light beer or regular beer. The data that we have includes four predictors. Some of them are numerical and some are categorical. And our output is a two-class variable called preference. We have 100 records and the data are available in the Excel sheet. So why not just use linear regression? Why don't we just include a dummy variable for y, say 1 is light and 0 is regular, and just to fit the model that's down here on the screen? What is going to happen? Well, let's think in a few different ways. First of all, you'll notice that the software has no problem running such a model. It's not going to give you an error message, usually, unless it's a very smart software that knows that this is not a very good idea. In Excel Minor, I simply ran the linear regression, and here's what happened. I do get predicted values, and I also can compute residuals. Here are charts of those residuals. And ask yourself, what is actually not so good about this? From a predictive standpoint, one problem that we have here is that the predictions are not necessarily binary. And if you remember, our y variable is binary. So that's one good reason. There are a few other reasons, but this is the main one when we think of prediction. So we want to have a classifier for a classification problem. Now, the trick in logistic regression is to start from the categorical y and try to transform it in some way so that we end up with something continuous. And once we have a continuous y, then we can just do something like linear regression. So let me take you through a few hoops and show you how we transform this categorical y into a continuous version. Why can't we just think of the probability of y equals 1? That's one possibility. That's continuous. So then we would just model the probability as a function of the predictors. Well, one problem is that even if you fit this model, will this guarantee that your predictions are valid? Will you necessarily get numbers that are between 0 and 1? The answer is no. So we're going to have to do something to this p so that it can actually obtain values that are on a broader range. Logistic regression is special not just because it is able to find a nice function of p, but because that function that I'm going to show you in a minute actually is very meaningful, which means that we'll be able to interpret the different coefficients in the regression, just like we're able to interpret them in a linear regression. So here's what's going to happen. We already talked about the we already talked about the probability. If I look at p over 1 minus p, and this is called the odds, then at least I expanded this range of values from 0 to infinity. Here's what these odds look like for p's between 0 and 1. However, 
If I fit the odds as a function of the predictors, I can still get negative values, which are not going to make any sense. Is to take a logarithm of the odds. And that's called the log odds, or for short, it's called the logit. And we can see a chart here that shows the logit as a function of p when p is between 0 and 1. The logit is a continuous measure. It can go between negative infinity and infinity. So now we can go ahead and fit the logit to the predictors. Now, just a word about odds. This concept of odds is an unusual concept. And if you think about the word odds in any other language, if you speak a language other than English, you'll notice that it actually does not exist. There is chance, there's probability, but there's no word for odds. People who use odds are usually people who either um, like to bet on horses or on cars or on cards. They're more familiar with this idea of odds, one to two, three to four. And here is a, a statistical method that actually is based on the concept of odds. So let's look at the relationship between probability and odds and logit. So if you tell me the odds of an event, I can compute what is its probability just using the reverse functions of what I used before. So if you give me the odds, say 2, then I can plug the 2 up here, and I see that I get a probability of 2 thirds. Even if you give me the logit, I can reverse and find the odds. So I can simply take an exponent of the logit, and that will give me the odds. And Finally, if you give me the logit, I can also go back two steps and obtain the probability. Now, why is this important? It's important because the software will spit out a logit, and we're going to be interested in the probability, which we then use with a cutoff. Of course, many software are smarter than that, and they'll actually give you the probabilities. But I do want you to understand what's the mechanism that's happening behind the scenes. So what we end up modeling is the logit, which is this non-linear function of our y. And it's modeled, again, as a function of predictors. The right-hand side looks like any linear regression. What's different is that on the left-hand side, we have a non-linear function. What this actually means, if you take an exponent on both sides, you get a relationship between the odds and the exponent of the predictors. This is what we call a multiplicative relationship between the predictors and the odds. A multiplicative relationship means that as you increase a unit in one of these predictors, it's going to increase a factor in terms of the odds. We'll talk about interpretation in the next session when we talk about description. Finally, in prediction, what we really care about is not so much the odds, but the actual probability. So if you want to see what kind of a function we're modeling between the probability as an output and the predictors as an input, it's a highly nonlinear function. But once you give me the estimates here of the coefficients and you give me a profile of a certain person here, I can easily compute his estimated probability. One interesting chart to show the difference between linear and logistic regression. In linear regression, we're fitting a linear line between the y and the x. Whereas in logistic regression, if you look at that function that we had previously with a 1 over 1 plus, we're fitting what's called an S-shaped curve, or sometimes called a sigmoid function. And this is a function that's used not only in logistic regression, but if you read up on neural nets, that's also a very popular function that's used in neural nets. How do we estimate the model? Of course, we're going to let the software do it. But let me just tell you what happens behind the scenes. Remember that on the Y side, we now have the logit. The logit is some function of p, the probability. But do I actually have a probability assigned to each record? No, I don't. So I can't just run a linear regression with a column of probabilities and, col and columns of predictors, because I don't really have that column. Instead, there's a trickier way of estimating that model, and that's called maximum likelihood estimation. In maximum likelihood estimation, what we're trying to do is to find those coefficients that maximize the chance of obtaining the data that we just see. We ask ourselves, which ones, which model with what set of coefficients is most likely to have generated these data? Now, the only thing that you want to know about maximum likelihood is that it's an iterative maximization procedure. And that's why it's going to take slightly longer than linear regression. However, when the unless the data set is enormous, you won't really feel this computation uh, too badly. Here's 
the result of running logistic regression on our beer example. You'll notice that we split the data here into training and validation, and then run the model. The coefficients are fit only based on the training data. And we can see here the results of the model. Here are the coefficients for each of the predictors. We have the odds, which are simply the exponents of these coefficients. And then we get some goodness of fit statistics, which again are not very important when we're interested in prediction. As before, we can get confusion matrices for the training or for the validation, and we'll use a cutoff value to translate the probabilities into the numbers that appear in the confusion matrix. In this example, in this example, we only have four predictors and two of them are numerical. So let's just see what this means. What does this output tell me? I'm just where I'm plotting predictors age and income on the two axes, and color is denoting the class, the Y class. Look down here and you'll see that income has a positive coefficient, whereas age has a negative coefficient. What the positive coefficient of income is telling me, as I increase income, I'm more likely to prefer light beer. Light beer here was the one, and regular beer was the zero. In contrast, age has a negative sign, telling me that as I increase age, I'm less likely to prefer light beer. And you can see that we're moving from pink into blue. So that's a general idea of what's happening behind the scenes. How do I use a logistic regression for classifying? Well, just like I do in a linear regression, except that I'll need to do one more step. So step number one, I give the software the Y column with zeros and ones and the predictors, and that will give me an estimated logistic model. But I'm going to get logits as the predictions. So I'm going to have to convert them back into probabilities, unless the software provides that. And then, of course, choose a cutoff in order to create these class memberships. Now, if your software only gives you logits and you want to get probabilities, simply use this very simple formula to get the probabilities of class membership. Let's try a small example. For instance, using this regression model that we just estimated on our training data, what would be the classification for a 45-year-old single male earning $40,000 a year? And we'll use a cutoff of 0 0.5. Now, the gender dummy equals to 1 for males, and the married dummy is 1 for married. Stop the video and see if you can figure out what should be the classification. OK, let's take this step by step. The first step is to try and estimate the probability of preferring light beer. To do that, we'll first have to compute the logit. So the logit is going to be computed by simply plugging in the coefficients from the model and multiplying it times the profile of this person. So 45 years, and this is a male, and unmarried, and income. We get a coefficient of negative 0.72. Now, how do we convert this into a probability? Simply use the formula that we had before. Make sure to keep sufficient digits, because when you take an exponent, things can drastically change when you cut decimals. We get a probability of preferring light beer that's equal to 0.3256. If I use a cutoff of 0 0.5, then obviously this person's probability does not exceed that threshold, and therefore we classify them as preferring regular beer. Now, question for you. Only based on this logit number, negative 0.7, could we have classified this person without going through the step of computing a probability? Think about how the cutoff threshold would map to the logit space. I'll leave that for a discussion question. All right, now what else is similar between linear and logistic regression? Variable selection. Remember stepwise and forward selection and backward elimination? All those techniques are also available in logistic regression. In Excel Minor, you'll again see a best subsets button. Here, the metrics for choosing predictive models will be slightly different than in linear regression. In particular, we did talk about CP earlier on, and CP again should be approximately equal to the number of predictors. So we can use CP in this case as well. The other measure that we'll use is called residual sum of squares, and the smaller it is, the better it is. Remember that variable selection will only tell you 
which is the best, say, pair predict of predictors or which is the best triplet of predictors. But it doesn't tell you whether that particular pair is indeed good. It's just better than all the other pairs. Remember in linear regression, there's this really nasty case where you have two variables that are completely correlated. They have a correlation of one or minus one. When that happens, the software is not going to run. We have a similar case that happens in logistic regression that's called perfectly separable data. And that is the problem or the multicollinearity problem that um, we'll encounter in logistic regression. And the idea is the following. Suppose that all the light beer drinkers are females and all the regular beer drinkers are males. In other words, a certain predictor perfectly separates the two classes of interest. Then what's going to happen is that the software is not going to run. Now, the question is, if you have this case, does that mean that this is actually a trivial classification problem and all you need to know is the gender of a person? Well, usually that's not the case. Usually the case is that you made some mistake. The common mistake is that you've probably generated the Y variable from an initial variable, and now you have kept that initial variable as a predictor. So that's not very good. Another possibility is that the X that you use is actually something that you get post hoc after the outcome of interest happens. And again, that might create perfect separation, but that would be useless because we don't have that information at the time of prediction. So just two examples that make you go back to your data and examine whether the variables that you're using are legal ones and useful ones. Let's summarize logistic regression in terms of its weaknesses and advantages for classification. So the good part is that it's model-based. A model-based classifier means that it doesn't need much data in order to predict. Now, what does this mean? It means that if we specify the formula and we specified a very particular formula, all that we need the data for is to estimate the coefficients. The data are not needed to actually discover the patterns in the data. We told it, here's the pattern, just quantify it. We'll also see soon that logistic regression is very useful for explaining. So it's very similar to linear regression. It's model-based, it's useful for explanation and for prediction, it's interpretable, and it has this nice variable selection feature. What are the weaknesses? Well, the fact that you're model-based means that you need to know how to specify that model. You need to know exactly what form of predictors go in there, and if there are interaction terms, if there's a squared term in there, etc., etc. So there's a plus and a minus to being model-based as opposed to data-driven. Secondly, we're fitting a global relationship. In other words, this mathematical relationship is going to be true or is going to be fitted to our entire data set. But if there's supposed to be a different function for males and for females, for instance, and we didn't take that into account, we'll be missing that. So again, pluses and minuses are very similar to those of linear regression. I will mention that logistic regression is a very strong classifier and it ends up winning in lots of data mining competitions. So always useful to give it a chance, even if you have a very large data set.